Today, we have a very, very special guest, Daniel Askew from Living Tennessee. Daniel is a mega agent from um, Tennessee. He started a brand called Living Tennessee, branded Living Tennessee instead of his name. I'm going to let him describe why he did that. And he also did a class called Get Local for us. And if you haven't seen it, go to our uh, YouTube page. So Daniel, welcome, welcome, welcome. I love doing business with you as a business partner. Thank you for teaching this class and teach us how to get into conversation and make some sales. Mm, awesome. Well, thanks for the kind intro. I appreciate being your partner as well. Uh, so how I'd love to do this today is mm, I really want this to be impactful for each of you. So I'm going to kind of hit some content pretty hard. And then about every 10 or 15 minutes, I'll stop. Um, I'll ask for some feedback. And really what I'm looking for there is just like, what did I say that kind of sticks out to you or what's going through your head? It's really important to kind of verbalize uh, what your ahas are as you're learning things and writing them down. It helps it anchor into your subconscious. And I really want this to be interactive, all right? So if you want to listen to me talk for an hour straight, this may be the wrong class, but I would love to uh, very, very much help you. Uh, so Tanya asked me, I guess it was about a month ago, you know, what do you, what do you want to teach? What's relevant? Kind of like, what are you hearing in the marketplace? And I've, I've spent uh, just I'll, two seconds on my background, uh, started in the mortgage business for about six or seven years, been in real estate for 12 years. Uh, we started our uh, team, uh, I think in my second year of the business, We've sold about 2,500 homes. We've got about 35 agents um, on our team right now. So I'm uh, just a product of a lot of other smart people around me. And um, anyways, I've tried a lot of tech, bought millions of dollars worth of leads, made millions of dollars worth of mistakes. So you get all of that wrapped up into what I'm about to say, um, which is interesting that we've gone very, very digital in the real estate business, but now I feel like the pendulum has swung in the other direction that um, marketing and, and getting deals <clears throat> is now about, it's, it's really always been this way, but it's even more so about just getting in front of people, uh, building a relationship and creating that connection. You know, like, oh crap, I've heard that before. Don't tell me the same thing again. This is, this is, like mission critical. This is what we're teaching our team. <clears throat> I just got off a phone call with my with one of my coaches, who's a, a mastery level coach at Tom Ferry. He was talking about the same thing. And so hopefully what you'll take away from everything I'm about to say is <clears throat> don't overcomplicate your business. Um, if you can, if you can master some of the fundamentals, some of your messaging, some of your mindset around like what you do and how you do it, you're gonna find deals. Um, on average, the uh, you can find at least one deal for every 40 people that you talk to. Like you stink, but you're just talking to 40 people, you're going to find one deal. So it's really, you know, one to two appointments out of every 20 conversations, but there's one deal every 40 people. So then the question just becomes, how do I get in front of 40 people and have 40 business conversations and how quickly can I do it? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so I'm going to share my screen here and let me, um, if you wouldn't mind, confirm that you guys can see it. All right, can you see me there? Yes. Yes. All right, there we go. All right, validity and positioning um, in today's market. All right, so. <clears throat> This is, uh, this is like real heavy, like kind of marketing thought process here. But um, think about <clears throat> before you're going out and, and turning conversations into deals, think about, first of all, like what is, what is your proof of concept? And when you're building a tech company or you're building a startup and you're asking for investors, um, investors are going to ask you a couple of like really critical things. And they really want you to understand that <clears throat> um, like, what does your customer really need? So there's a term called lean product development, which means that you figure out what customers want and then you reverse engineer your product backwards, right? So you want to make sure that you're building things that are important to your customers, not just important to you. And like, as a young business owner for myself, I wanted to build things that I thought were interesting, I thought were interesting or things that I thought were needed. Where the reality is, is if I had just talked to more people and discovered really what my customer wants, 
then it would have saved me years and years of, of beating my head against the wall to deliver a product that makes sense for them. So a couple of things I want to cover today. Get, how do you come up with three compelling reasons why someone should hire you? Um, has everyone ever watched Shark Tank before? Mm-hmm. Uh, who, anyone seen every episode three times, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so I want you to think about yourself. Like, are you investable? Mm-hmm. If I was to sit here and ask you right now, if I was Mark Cube, if I was Barbara, and uh, and you wanted some money, are you investable? When you start to think of yourself as a business, and you think that you're um, you're kind of the jockey riding the big horse, and you build the processes around your business, it's going to help you with a lot of clarity and kind of staying within some structure uh, to help you grow. So we're going to talk about your value equals your price. So the more and more I see agents going out and cutting their commission, um, just understand that when you're giving away 1% or 3% to get deals, you know, you're taking 33%, 63%, you know, 66% of money away from your family. So I uh, really want you to think about how you articulate your business and uh, the value that you place in your business is around your price. So a couple of things just as we get in here, but I really want you to write, I want you to write this down is what are the biggest pain points of your customers right now in the marketplace? Just write down, you don't have to do it at this moment. You can maybe circle back to this. I'm going to send everybody these slides in addition to, or Tanya's going to send everyone these slides in addition to some other kind of giveaways. But what, what are the biggest pain points for your customers? And if you really don't know like what you're building, say you're a new agent and you're just a little confused, The challenge that I would love for you to take, if you you literally don't hear anything else that I say today, the challenge I would lay out for you is, are you willing to go to talk to 100 consumers about your product and listen to the feedback? And what that looks like is, hey, Tanya, it's Daniel. Thank you for taking my call. As you know, I'm getting into the real estate business. And I'm just curious, like, have you ever bought a home before? How did that experience go? What did your real estate agent do really well? What did your agent not do really well? <clears throat> and just listening to them, if you were going to buy or sell a house in today's market, what would be the most valuable thing that a real estate agent could do for you? And what that's doing is one, people love to give their opinion. <laughs> You're building rapport. And ultimately, at the end of the day, at the end of that conversation, you could say, well, Tanya, if I were to do X, Y, and Z, Next time you are ready to buy or sell, would you consider me um, as an opportunity to interview with you? So talk to 100 100 people. What do they see valuable in a real estate agent? Take that feedback and record it. Um, And then customer development. I think this is really critical too, but if you were to make an avatar of your ideal client, what would it look like? Where do they live? Who do they hang out with? Where do they, where did, what are their habits? Um, What's their background? Do you want to work with people with kids or do you want to work with people that are relocating to your area? Like what is your ideal client avatar? I mean, there's seven situations that cause people to buy or sell every single day. You know, it's diapers, divorce, death, um, relocating, three others, but you get the point. Um, Once you identify that target um, avatar, your brain just has a funny way of finding it. You know, if you think of the world as kind of the matrix and your brain starts to look for what information is important. So once you have an ideal client, could be a first time home buyer, could be an investor, whatever that looks like, somehow or another, like they're just going to show up in your world. So really think through what your um, customer development, what's going to look, what that's going to look like. Um, So I'm going to kind of breeze through a couple of these because I've got some more meaty stuff at the end, but this, this is to me really important too. But what would you say your mother says makes you special? You know, if I'm going to go out and do marketing, um, I want to tie in my background, the way I was raised, uh, my parents, maybe it's the good or the bad, but our experience in the past affects how we do our business today. So um, what would you say makes you special? You know, like my mom likes to joke that I have charisma. I actually think that's still that from a movie, but um, you know, if someone was to describe you, are you a caring person? Are you a hard worker? Are you smart? Are you tough? Are you stubborn? Like, what are those character traits that when someone hires you, that gets to come with it? 
you know, I used to tell people, you know, I worked in the restaurant industry. So <clears throat> I was on my feet. I learned how to hustle. I worked long days. I really listened to what people want. I learned all the details about the recipes and the fine dining. I learned all the details about the wine. Everything that I would learn in the restaurant business helped me uh, serve customers as a real estate agent. So don't discount, you know, your background. And <clears throat> over time, I want you to think about how do you create some messaging around like, here's who I am and here's how this applies to you. And remember that when you're talking with people, everyone's just care. Everyone really cares about themselves. <laughs> I think we can all agree to that. And so when you're pitching, building relationships, the other person's always just in there going, what, what's in it for me? You know? And so a really powerful kind of like uh, talk track is here's, here's who I am. Here's what I've done, et cetera, et cetera. Here's what I'm willing to do, et cetera. And that's a benefit to you because. So write that down. This is a benefit to you because. So whenever you've got kind of like a statement, this is important because, and then the after because is the really important part. That's really what they're hearing is the because. Does that make sense? I see a lot of us salespeople, we go out and we just talk and we talk and we talk. We don't really listen, but we also don't connect the dots. Like if I were to say like, hey, I'm great with, I'm good with relationships or, oh, my mom says I have charisma and the customer's like, why do I care? I say, well, I have, my mom says I have charisma and that's important to you because I get along with other agents. I have a lot of contacts in the real estate industry. So when you hire me, I'm going to go out and use my relationships and use that charisma to find your house before it hits the market. How does that sound to you? Right. So connect the dots this is important to you because um, the E-Myth, great uh, business book, my favorite business book that I that kind of got me started out my career. Um, highly recommend you go to read it, especially if you're new or at building a business. But essentially, um, it tells you to build your business off of processes. And <clears throat> oftentimes when we think about processes, we always think kind of operationally like, hey, I've got a checklist here. I've got a checklist there. But what I want to encourage you to do is to really think about your, your uh, processes around your language patterns, right? Modern marketing is mastering your language of sales. Like that's really kind of the point that I want to hammer down today. You know, your sales, <clears throat> excuse me, your language, your words, your tone, your speed, your ability to smile, all of that is actually marketing you most of the time we're actually not selling the product in real estate. We're selling ourselves and we're selling our ability to help people make good financial decisions. So um, I want you to think about like when I meet someone, what the heck do I say? Like, what the heck do I say? Do I say the same thing every time? Am I listening, et cetera? So what's the value of a real estate agent in today's marketplace? Um, <clears throat> I think, um, the number, one the number one complaint from consumers about agents is that we don't communicate well. So if you're thinking, okay, how do I market myself with little to no money in today's business? Pick up your phone, reach out to people, be accessible, like communicate. Does anyone have anybody in their lives that is just terrible communicator? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's me most of the time. It makes it really, really frustrating. So if you think like, hey, um, you know, I'm going to be a real estate agent and I'm going to deal with the most expensive asset, the roof over people's heads. It's the biggest deal in their life, hands down, when they're in the when they're in the market. And I'm not going to communicate well. So just think like one thing I can do free, one thing I can invest my minutes on is communicating at a high rate. Second thing. Agents, agents connect assets, right? So we build relationships with the best service providers in the community, and then we connect assets for people. Hey, I got a guy. When you hire me, so I'm out there marketing myself, hey, come work with me. And when you hire me, you get X. I get, <clears throat> you get all of my contacts. These are pre-vetted people in the marketplace that serve uh, my customers at a really high level. I want you to drop my name, and um, watch how well they take care of you, right? So a great real estate agent connects assets. We also interpret data, 
right? So information's out there, but wisdom is really what's greatly needed. <clears throat> so think about this. Um, you know, there's WebMD on the internet. Anyone ever seen WebMD? Still with me? All right. So you've seen WebMD, but when we're sick, we still go to the doctor, right? Yeah. So think, so think about that, right? I mean, I think sometimes we undervalue what we do as agents because there's a lot of information on the internet about buying and selling real estate, but people still want to work with a professional and they want someone to interpret what that data means to them. Hey, here's, here's the marketplace. Homes are going up, you know, 12.8%. And that's important to you because your home on average is worth $400,000. Did you realize that your home went up $36,000 in the last 12 months? Man, that's amazing, right? So there's always a need for people interpreting the data. Um, we also negotiate on behalf of our clients. So when it comes, what I like to tell people is when it comes to your money, I'm like a pit bull. I'm going to treat your money like my own. And I'm going to make sure that we save every penny we need to save and that we're going to keep as much money in your pocket as possible. And that we're going to get you in a home that's going to appreciate and help your family tree. So you can tell that I've said that to people before, right? This is, this is how I'm marketing myself. Um, <clears throat> accessibility, don't be the weak link. So when you hire me, I'm going to make sure that me or my assistant is always available to answer your call. If you're a newer agent and you're building up these kind of roadblocks around your life, if you have another job where you can't answer the phone, like, are you really taking care of your clients? Like, really think about that. If you, and, and here's just something, and write this down. Whenever you're stuck on what to do as an agent, put your buyer or your seller hat on. If you were going to hire an agent to find you a house, to, to help you buy a house, what would your expectations be? If you were going to hire an agent to sell your house, what would your expectations be? And if you can list out those expectations and then you can perform those for your clients, I guarantee you 70, 80% of people are going to say yes and want to work with you. So we're also community ambassadors, right? And this is something that I, I harp on anytime I'm talking to potential customers, but I would say like, I want to be your local economist of choice. So every month I pay a lady to pull a report for me. It has all the data about every zip code. It's um, uh, absorption rates, um, medium price point, all those stats that are in your actual like MLS software. And I memorize them and I'll, I'll share a little secret. Anytime that I'm going to a party at someone's house, like anytime I'm going to a new restaurant, anytime I'm going to like a gathering, I will do a CMA around that area before I go. Really do this hard during the holidays. And that way, when someone asks me, oh, I heard you're in real estate, how's the market? I say, oh, that's funny you should ask. You know, this area is crazy. It's gone up 11.34% and the homes in this neighborhood, that means they've gone up $55,000 in the last 12 months. Man, the house is really amazing. But I'll also be able to speak intelligently if I'm at someone's house and like, how's the market? Or what do you think my house is worth? Anyone ever been asked that? I can literally spout off the stats. And I'm just trying to sound smart. I mean, if we're being honest, I just want to sound smart. <laughs> but <clears throat> just a little bit of extra prep. And that's me marketing myself as an agent. And they, they don't know that I just did the research before I came. They just think that I'm in the market and that I'm on my game. Um, and then another big thing, and as we, and we'll move on, but another big thing is finding the property for your buyers and finding buyers for your sellers. That's what most people think that they want. So as you're crafting like your modern marketing and you're turning conversations into deals, these are the main things in some, in some form of fashion that you need to be able to clearly articulate in your messaging, whether it's in-person conversations, email marketing, social media, et cetera. All right, so I'm gonna stop here. Give me a couple of thoughts. What's going through your head? Want me to keep talking? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Oh, you guys speak up. You guys literally have a mega agent here. Well, this is where you get can you, I'm oh, sorry, Tanya. Uh, can you give a little more when you said um, reverse marketing? 
Um, and then you, I mean, you say, you know, learn what they want and then go at it like the, to reverse marketing. Yeah. So we're, the, no. we're the, I'm <laughs> no problem. I'm actually watching my kids today too. So um, I'm likely to be interrupted at some point. Uh, so what I mean by that here, here is where I learned that is when you're building a tech product, I'll give you an analogy. So you've got this technologist, right? These little kind of nerdy guys that are writing a bunch of code. And they're like, oh, I've got this great idea, right? And so they type, 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 and they bring it to a group of investors. And they're like, hey, I've got this really, really cool thing. And I want you to give me money so I can build it. And the investor goes, well, this, what does this mean for me? And the process, many times when you see a technology product, from the time it was an idea to the time it's a product that hits the market, it changes 10 times in between. And so what investors do is they'll push back on the technologist and they'll say, hey, well, who's going to buy this? And, and what will they be willing to pay for it? And so the technologist has to say, oh, crap, like I need to actually go out and talk to people and say, hey, I've got this cool thing. Will you use it? And then when they use it, they say, would you pay for this and how much? So the, the thought process is really just instead of us just assuming what people want, that we go out and just talk to your friends, talk to your people at your work, talk to people at your kid's school and just say, be humble and say, hey, you know, I'm in the real estate business, but, you know, real estate means a little something different to everybody. So as I'm building out kind of like my business, I would like to hear from you, what is the most important thing when buying or selling property to you? So customer discovery and lean product development is all about taking feedback from potential customers and then crafting the product around something that's most useful to them. Does that make sense? So the, the, sim, yeah, the simplest way to say it is before you start going out and marketing yourself, go talk to 50 people and ask them what you could do that would be valuable. And then when they give you that feedback, then you go back and you build that into your marketing. Hey, here's what I do. I talked to 50 people. They said, this was the most important thing. And this is what I'm basically the product that I'm building in my business. You know, Daniel, one thing that you said at the very beginning is to not overcomplicate your business. And I think that's what's happening is all these agents are in their head thinking like, what's my brand? I need to know exactly what to say. I need to do this. And I need to know how to work with buyers and how to work with sellers. Bottom line is you don't really know and need to know all of that as much as you think you do. You actually need to know how to actually have interpersonal conversations, how to, like Daniel said, introduce yourself. Hey, my name's Tanya. I work for, for EXP. I'm a realtor. I like to say, I help people obtain the American dream. Right. Love it. And the people are like, what? I'm like, I help people with home ownership. Yeah, well, you know, this class was is kind of funny because I labeled it modern marketing, but really, like I was saying earlier, it's the pendulum has swung back, and and this is how we're running our team. And I'll I'll just be transparent with you. We we bought every tech product on the market. I mean, there was at times about a year and a half ago we were spending almost eighty thousand dollars a month in our business, and every year I looked at all of our sales. And we had a call center. We were buying leads from like five or six different sources. I mean, so much tech. And I look at all of our sales and the number one source every year, no matter what. I mean, this is multi, multi years of data. It's always from the agents, friends and family, like always. And it may not be their best friend, but it's a referral from their best friend. And so I thought, okay, <laughs> how do we craft like really modern marketing is how do I build relationships and maintain those relationships? Because where I believe social media has actually pulled us all apart. Yes, they say it's connected the world, but many of, instead of me um, calling Angela and saying, hey, Angela, like you want to go have some coffee and catch up? I'll just read her Facebook page and be like, oh, she's fine. Her little girl's going to kindergarten, you know, cool. So we don't take that time to get face-to-face -face and build connections. So like 
what is working really well right now, I always tell our team, it's separating the sheep from the herd. <laughs> you know, it's, it's going to some parties, going to happy hours, going to networking events, going to your church, you know, having a lot of conversations. And then the interesting ones, you're separating those sheep from the herd and you're getting one-on-one -on -one with them. So I'm going to talk I, a little bit more. That. Yeah. Can I add to that? Sure, please. Um, Laura Malik gave a class called Beyond Listings. Okay. And you guys were in that, a lot of you guys were in that class and all beyond listings is, is you be the person that actually uh, plans something like, Hey, does everybody want to go out for margaritas or everyone want anyone to go out for taco Tuesdays or, Hey, it's summer right now. Does anyone want to come over for a paint party? You know, you don't have to do like all these things that cost a lot of money. If you're the person that actually plans something, just puts it on the calendar, like, People are going to come. People aren't planning things anymore. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. And, and the other part of like modern marketing, and especially at your stage, you know, I know all of you are successful, but the challenge is like, as you scale your business, your expenses go through the roof. And really, if you look at even big corporations outside of real estate, you should keep your expenses 10 to 15% of your revenue max. But if you look at most real estate agent businesses, you know, me being included, we're spending, you know, sometimes 50 or 60 percent of money on marketing, paying for leads, buying Zillow, thinking that they're shortcuts when actually we haven't even saturated those free opportunities. It's funny because this is like the slide right here just says you probably don't have a lot of money to, in to invest, but where do you invest your minutes? right? You have money and minutes to invest. <laughs> so where are you investing your minutes? And are you getting an ROI for those minutes? So what I teach our team is I want you to be in two networking groups. One is a business networking group and one is an affinity group. An affinity group is something that you're interested in. Like if you're interested, if you're a cat person, join a group that hangs out and talks about cats. Maybe you like to drink wine, join a wine group. Maybe it's football, you know, whatever you're interested in. Birds of a feather flock together. It's really easy to make friends when you're in groups where people have shared interests. I actually so, have a, an example. Uh, and I came back from Colorado. I moved back to Colorado and I have a rut club where we do crazy fitness events. Perfect. <laughs> and you love it, right? And I literally showed up and I was like, I'm so glad I'm back. Like I got, and I straight up told them, I've never told them this. <clears throat> You guys, I'm back because I want to connect with like-minded people. And every one of them was like, thank God it fell apart. We need to get together. And I said, and I'm going to be honest with you. I'm actually back so I can get my name out there because I'm looking for agents that I can coach. And I'm looking for people to help buy or sell a home. That's another reason why I'm doing this group. And they were like, oh, we already have a referral for you. So don't try to hide. You guys have to let your intentions be known. Like if I'm putting my time and money into this, you know what, you guys, think of me, please, if you know of someone by or selling a house. Yeah, I mean, that, to sum up the whole, my whole thought process around, like, this chat is exactly what Tani just said. That is modern marketing, which is, she knew her messaging, she knew what she wanted, she got into a group with other people that were like her, that had a shared interest, and then she just said her spiel, right? She just said, like, that was her elevator pitch, you know, she just said, here's what I'm looking for. And you know what's funny? Uh, people do actually like to help. Um, I read a study about, sorry, I don't want to get too far off topic, but I read a study about email marketing and the number one open rates. Like, so the subject line is really critical um, for emails to be opened. And I won't bore you with asking what you all think. Just the answer was the number one um, was I need your help. So in a subject line, if you ask someone, hey, I need your help, the open rate is like 4X bigger than any other subject line. The second one was thank you. <laughs> thank you and I need your help. So anyways, people will help you if you ask. And if you're clear and you're concise, like so imagine if Tanya did that same thing, you know, one or two times a week, like she could easily generate 20 to 30 sales a year just from doing that and have a very high margin business and really enjoy what she's doing. Because the other thing is that, and that we've learned with our team is going out and buying leads and chasing people who you don't know. Um, it just wears you out and it's not, and it's not fun. 
So I'll give you, I'll give you a little spiel uh, and then I'll move on. But think about all the different lead sources that are out there. You've got for sale by owners, you've got expireds, you've got Zillow, right? There's all these different things. Most of all those sources are seasonal. Like there's times when there's no expireds, right? Because everything's selling. There's times when there's no FISBOs because everything's selling. Zillow leads used to cost about twenty to thirty dollars a lead, you know, five or six years ago. Now they're four to six hundred dollars a lead, right? So there are all these different lead sources change with seasons. The one source that never changes is your relationships, your local relationships. If you can build a database with at least two hundred fifty people, market to those people, clear messaging, helpful, humble, resourceful and you get one referral, <laughs> you can get about a 10% return out of that database every year. So you're looking at 25 deals and just market to those people. There's your entire business. But guess what? Yes, ma'am. Guess how you do that? Let's hear it. You got to leave your house. <laughs> you Go actually connect. have to put your pants on. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you actually put pants on instead of yoga pants, you'll realize that you just gained 15 pounds that you didn't know about. <laughs> My mom said, I'm going to stop buying yoga pants because I realized that yoga pants keep you fat. She goes, I literally am buying jeans now because I didn't know I gained so much weight. <laughs> well, it may, I, I can't remember, I may have put this in one of my slides here, but yeah, look like you've been there before. The way I the way I learned from my dad is kind of old school. He's like, you always want to dress one level above like who you're meeting with. So, you know, I used to wear a suit in the bad parts of town sometimes and people thought I was the feds. You know, like I was dressed a little too much for like my target, target audience. Um, but like if someone imagine if you're a homeowner and you're looking through the peephole, can you tell who the agent is and who the customer is? Like that is marketing. <laughs> it's like, I'm dressed like I've been there before. I'm dealing with hundreds of thousands of dollars in the roof overhead for someone. Like put on some shoes, don't wear yoga pants. People notice that stuff. Like guys wear these cargo pants. It's like sandals with no socks. I mean, yes, you can sell real estate and not dress up. Like hear me say that. However, if you want to give yourself those little micro advantages, like when someone looks sharp, like it makes an impression. So yeah, actually I have something to add to that. So sure. in lab code agents, I have people say, how do I get in the luxury market? <laughs> right. And I have so many people that want to sell luxury, but they don't got a luxury attitude. Okay. They're like, they, they are either living in their 20 year old days, like talking about marijuana on their page, like, cause they're, it's so hip and cool, right? Their Facebook looks super immature, like they're drinking, right? And they're trying to get into the luxury market. And you know what people said, if you want to get in the luxury market, guess what you do? Go hang around with people where people have money, go to golf clubs, go hang around resorts, go get into car clubs, those kinds of things, right? Yeah. If you want to hang around empty nesters, where do empty nesters hang out? At the bar. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> yeah, it's five o'clock somewhere. I waited 18 years for this. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong. I used to, whenever my business was slow, I used to go to happy hours and I would come home with a deal every time, right? Yeah. So you can go get deals from bars. Just make sure you only have one or two drinks while everybody else has five or 10, you know, because I've definitely made the mistake before where I had a deal, but I drank too much and forgot the conversation or I forgot to follow up. So like, don't do that. Don't, <laughs> yeah. do, don't do that. Don't you know do what? that. I moved back to Colorado and I knew I wanted to build my business. One, getting referrals and two agents. And guess what my number one strategy was? I need to get out. I need to do events. I need to get in front of people. I need to start clubs. I need to run clubs. I need to do, I need to be in front of people. I didn't have really a crazy strategy. I just want to be in front of people. And I know my business will flourish and it already has. Yeah. Well, believe it or not, most people, you know, if you think about people that have money today, there actually is very few people who inherited it. I mean, yes, there's like, you know, I, I, I did not inherit any money, <laughs> um, but most people don't inherit it. Yes, you've got those trust, I call them uh, the 
trustafarians like the people who like look terrible but they're on their dad's like trust fund um <clears throat> that is actually less than people who have actually worked really hard to make their money so point is if you want to get into luxury and you want to hang around people who have had a little bit more success they just want to see that you will hustle like if people think you will hustle if they think you care they think you're resourceful and they think you'll hustle you will get deals. Like there's a reason why new agents do deals every year. It's because they convince people that they are willing to hustle. Like time is your asset when you're newer. Um, but anyways, don't assume everyone's just lazy and, and on trust funds. Typically people that are getting into that luxury space, you know, they're dual incomes, they're both working and they've worked really hard. And so when you display that you're willing to work hard too, then that's that connection point. Um, so uh, moving right along, greatest sales pitch ever just to give you like a little bit of an idea <laughs> is you want to help people make the most amount of money with the least amount of time and the least amount of hassle like that's basically what you do and if you catch yourself buying products online they're typically in one of those three categories they're either 10 times cheaper they're 10 times faster or they're 10 times better right so if you're just literally like okay i want to go out of my market myself i have no idea what to say like this is what you come back to is, hey, when people hire me, I help them make the most amount of, t the most amount of money with the least amount of time and hassle. Uh, because people will, you know, not every decision's made on price. Sometimes if people think it's just an easy path to work with you, um, they'll work with you. And then some people are motivated by time, right? So it's, I'm willing to deal with a little more hassle if we can get it done faster. But that's, that's what I'm promising you is like, I want to make, I want to like maximize the dollars and minimize like the hassle and the time risk. Does that make sense? Um, so this is a really important concept, but perception is projection. Um, you have to really kind of think about this, but how you perceive yourself um, is how you project yourself onto other people. So um, part of why I went, I, I wrote this, presentation this way and starting with those basics and understanding your value is that if you perceive yourself as valuable, then you'll project that value. But if you, if you see, if you perceive yourself as sloppy or incompetent or, you know, just like I haven't sold a lot of houses, therefore, like, I'm just kind of thinking about the way your shoulders and your face looks when you're not confident and you're like, Oh, will you please hire me? You know, like, but if you do like the Tony Robbins, the, the Wonder Woman pose and you're walking into a room and you got your shoulders back and you got your chin up, you speak loud, you talk fast, you're confident. Like when you feel that internally, you're going to project that to other people. And um, that's the way you get business. So if you're, if you catch yourself out there and you're running into opportunities, but you're not converting them it's probably because internally you still got some head trash around your competency. So the things you can do there are just really um, go back to your plan, learn, 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 and plan it like really, really study before you meet with people. Like that's what I did because I wasn't competent at the beginning. And so every time I knew I was going to meet with someone, I would spend an extra hour reviewing comps, writing a list of questions that I want to ask those people visualizing how the, I wanted the meeting to go over prepare basically <clears throat> anytime you over prepare it's going to help your confidence go up Daniel can I just add to something that you had sure. that work 10 times harder um right there be 10 times cheaper 10 times faster 10 times better I know you were talking about like what you could do to help them but right now a lot of you guys don't know you know a lot because you've help, helped a lot of clients so if you're 10 times more consistent with your social media and if you're 10 times more consistent with showing properties that you viewed and you're 10 times more consistent with open houses you're showing the world that it percept like you said percep perception is projection people think you're busy right so it's almost better to know how to do video these days and know how to be really good at social media than try to know every objection handler and every every uh, marketing device out there. Would you agree with me, Daniel? Yes, I totally agree. And you uh, and you guys have probably heard this analogy before, but think about you've got a bucket and you've got three different objects that you have to fit in the bucket. You've got uh, sand. Um, little rocks and big rocks. 
and you got to fit everything in the bucket, which one do you put in first? Any guesses? I guess the little rocks. Yeah, I was gonna say rock. Little rocks. The little rocks. So actually, the answer. <laughs> I wish I had the slide. It'll make it more. Uh, <laughs> it'll make it more impact impactful. But to get everything in the bucket, you actually have to put the big rocks in yeah. first, and then you put in the little rocks, and then you put the sand over them. If you put the little rocks in first, then the big rocks won't fit in the bucket. <laughs> And the point of the analogy is that as agents, first thing we do is like, oh, I want to design a logo. Hey, I want to make some fancy email plan. Hey, I want to buy this. Hey, I want to do that. And you're focused on the minors instead of the majors. If you really want to like get your business rolling, you need one to three big rocks every quarter. And you don't mess with the little rocks or the sand until the big rocks are completed. So my wife is a consultant. And she just like, she's building a new company. She finally respects me a little more as an entrepreneur now because she's going through these struggles. But she's like asking me these questions all the time. And I'll just basically say, well, is that a big rock or is that some sand? Right. Because people typically want you to talk about sand. And, and our natural inclination is to focus on the sand, which is just all the crap that doesn't matter. So if you really want to like get some momentum in your business, if you could start to differentiate, like if you look at your week and you're like, okay, what am I spending my time doing? Like, are you doing, are you working on the little rocks? Are you working on the sand or you got your big rocks? And I would argue that the big rocks are simply getting involved with your groups. What I just told you, getting involved with your groups and making sure you're having 25 business conversations a day, or I'm sorry, 25 business conversations a week. And until those two things are done, everything else is sand. Does that make sense? All right. <clears throat> kind of getting to uh, to the meat here of what I was wanting to talk about. So um, I'm sure you've all heard the term, your USP, which is your unique, uh, your unique selling proposition. So I wanna kind of give you some new perspective on that. Your unique selling proposition equals your value action commitment. Your value action commitment. And what I mean by that is, Here's the value that I'm going to provide you. When you hire me, here's the value I'm going to provide. And here's the action that I'm committed to taking. Like that's all it is, right? So what I want to encourage you guys to do, and write this down. Um, I want you to think about your business plan chronologically before the transaction, during the transaction, and after the transaction. Before, during, and after. This is how I did it. And then underneath each bucket, I want you to make a list of things that you that are valuable to consumers that you are committing to provide when they hire you. So I'll say that one more time. Before, during, and after, think chronologically. And then I want you to just make a checklist. So when someone hires me, here's everything I do. Here's what I'm committing to do for you before the deal. And then here's all the things I'm committing to do for you during the deal. And here's the things I'm committed to do you to do for you after the deal. Now, what will happen is we'll come up with a bunch of ideas and, and that's not a bad thing. Come up with every idea you think you wanna do and then go back and erase 30% of it and just put it on the list, things that you can actually execute. And then every year as you grow your business, you can always add on a couple bells and whistles, but people will hire you if you're clear and concise about what you will do for them, why it's important for them, and you just execute your plan. Like that's all they're looking for. They just wanna make sure that when they work with you as their agent, that you can help them get what they want. So this does not have to be super complicated. This is simply like, here's what I do. I execute it like the back of my hand and I have a track record of success over time. So the reason this exercise is really important is this is your marketing. So when you're going out there and you're having these conversations with people that you in the back of your head know that when someone works with you, here's all the things that you'll do for them. And that becomes your presentation. Well, that and Daniel, we have buyer and seller presentations and EXP marketing mm -hmm. that are phenomenal. And I also have a link for you guys that I put on Canva. This is where you can put these on your buyer and seller presentations and show them. 
Absolutely. Everyone, has anyone ever heard like you need systems, system, 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 right? I'm sure you've all heard that. Right. A system is just a checklist that you will follow. Like that's all a system is. <laughs> so don't overcomplicate it. Like it's just a system that you'll follow. Um, but sometimes, you know, there's not an opportunity to do a nice presentation. You know, sometimes people are moving really fast or you're meeting them at a coffee shop and you don't have like a screen in front of you. So what I did is I, I made my checklist and then over time I just memorized them or I would write down kind of the key points before I met with someone. And then when we have a, a chat, I'm just kind of going through, visually going through what I've got memorized in my head. Hey, here's a couple of key things. My clients always tell me this is really valuable for them. So here's what I did. Does that make sense? And then, so what you can do there is, so you've got your value action commitment, and then you think about your conversations and your messaging, but then you can also take those same bullet points and put that into your email marketing, put it into your social media. You can elaborate, create white papers. Like this is basically the basis of creating all of those other content pieces. You got it, you got to start here first. All right, so I'm gonna stop there for a second. Tell me what's going to your head. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for like two seconds. Would love to hear some feedback and then I'll finish off um, the rest of it. Hear it, you guys, hear it. Just tell me what, you, just tell me what's, what you're thinking, anything standing out, anything that you're gonna implement, what's going to your head. I, I do have a question about, sure. um, what you offer to your client. I know that as a seller agent, you have to negotiate your commission. Um, will you just divulge everything or as you uh, negotiate your commission, you add more to that list so that you can negotiate a greater commission? I know maybe this doesn't cover commissions today, but I am, no. I am at that point. Yeah, it's, it plays exactly into that. Because do you ever feel... I, I did that I was overpaid. Like, have you ever felt that way? Have you ever done a deal and you get paid 3% and you're like, wow, like someone paid me 10 grand for that. I, I would actually feel guilt around that sometimes. Now, if you're in the business long enough, you realize agents earn every penny of what they do. However, I felt guilt around that. And so I started these lists and I was really surprised. And in fact, I can email Tanya I've got like some jumbled lists. What I did is I have, I, I call it hire me service plan for buyers. And then I have a hire me service plan for sellers, right? <clears throat> and then I just literally made this long list of everything. I mean, anything you could think of, like even from the point of scheduling like a showing service, like logistics of a showing day, um, pulling tax records, like all those little things we do, but we don't give ourselves credit and so what can happen is you see this big list and then when you're going and you're meeting with a seller and they start to negotiate commission, like you could literally pull out the list if you wanted, or it could be in your presentation, or you could verbally say, you say, Hey, I totally understand your question. And, and uh, to me, it sounds like money's really important to you. I just want you to know that money's important to me as well. Here's all the things that you get for the 3%. And that way it's not just this pie in the sky number. It's like, Hey, I actually, typically, another thing to consider with commissions is your relationship with them is most of the time going to be three to four months. So if you took that commission and you divide it by, let's say, 12 weeks or 16 weeks, it's going to end up being like a thousand bucks a week, which they would hire another professional at that same rate. Right. So I, I felt that when people hit me with a commission, if I can get back very, very clear, here's all the things I do for you and here's why I charge what I charge, then they're not going to push back near as much. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. I didn't think about the breakdown of dividing it by the week and make it more of a visual thing for them. So thank you so much. That was very helpful. Thank You're you. welcome. You're welcome. I mean, think about it. I mean, some people take six months or... And, and here's the other thing with commission is that your commission rate reflects the value that you bring and the risk that you take for not getting paid. So when you go to an, when you go to an attorney, is the attorney charging you to like 
move boxes and like write documents. No, they're charging you for their consulting and their brain that when situations arise, that they know how to advise you to tell you the right thing to do. Like that's really what you're paying them for. And most attorneys don't get paid unless they win the case. So that's how I explain it to people. Because the risk, the risk you're taking, because you could put months and months in work on a buyer and on a seller and never get paid. So that's reflected in your rate. And Mr. Seller, if you would like a discount, I do have a program for you. I normally reserve this for people who are like leaders in the community, such as doctors and teachers and policemen and firemen. Um, but I will add you to that program. Here's the caveat. I will discount my rate X dollars. I don't say percent. I say X dollars, right? 1% doesn't sound like anything. But if I said, hey, I'm going to give you a $3,000 discount, how does that sound? It's like, whoa. Or a $3,268 discount. How does that sound to you? Um, so I'm going to give it a specific discount and say, here's the caveat. You have to refer me to a friend or family or someone like you before closing. So if you help me grow my business, then I'll reward you with a, with a different disc, with a discount. That's good. That's good. Thank you. That way it doesn't sound like you're just kind of rolling over and giving away your money, but if this has happened before you thought it through, you have a process, you have a program <clears throat> goes way smoother. All right, any other uh, quick thoughts before we move on? Questions? All right, I'm gonna share my screen again. All right, so why, why should I hire you? We've been talking about this. Um, you guys can see my screen, correct? All right, cool. Um, you're always selling benefits. Uh, we talked about the elevator pitch um, that Tanya meant. Um, and I think with the elevator pitch, the key the thing there is you're prepared for the conversation, right? So think about a baseball player, right? You're getting up, you've got these at bats, right? And baseball players can get in the hall of fame with a 35% batting average, you know? So you don't have to nail every single lead. However, you're only going to get so many at bats every year. And so Preparing for that conversation, visualize what you're going to say, practicing with your spouse or, or an agent or your coach or friend, uh, making sure that, hey, when that lead comes in front of me, like I'm going to be ready to say what I need to say to get that opportunity. So elevator pitch is concise. It's clear. And just remember that our society has ADD, like all of us have it, right? So you basically have six seconds to get someone's attention. Like that's how long they're, they're in their head going, I'm either going to listen to what she has to say or I'm not. So an elevator pitch, clear, concise, um, and just, you know, practice. I would typically just say like, man, I sell a ton of houses to great people. Like that's what I do. Um, what I used to say, which is, is basically like, I make people dump trucks full of money. So like when you work with me, like I work with a lot of investors, typically like I just I just my 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 goal for you Haley is like I just want to back a dump truck full of cash into your into your front yard how's that sound and they always laugh and they think it's funny um, <laughs> but I'm dead serious like I've helped people make a lot of money and I use real estate as that vehicle so how would you feel if I made you a dump truck full of cash Haley I'll also say this and I won't charge you guys for it but I'll tell them <laughs> I'll say, hey, uh, may I give you some advice? And you're like, yeah, sure. You're like, man, if I were you, I'd hire me. And, and then you just have to stop, <laughs> let it sit for a minute. They love it. They'll laugh. You're like, dude, can I give you some advice? If I were you, I'd hire me. And I'd just be done with this. And I'll be like, all right, you're right. Signs every time. Good icebreaker, too. Very good. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, people are so serious, you know, like I always try to like have a good attitude, have a little humor with what I'm doing. Um, but, you know, just don't like, don't be a fun sponge. Like my wife and I have a boat and there's people that we've labeled as fun sponges. They're not allowed to come on the boat. Like when someone's buying a house or they're selling a house, they think that there's going to be a property brother there and you're going to sell, you're going to walk in three houses and you're going to get one. It's going to be beautiful. And there's beautiful men everywhere. Like they want it to be fun. 
So if you're going out and you're marketing yourself and you're so stiff and you're, you're, you're negative and you've got like, you're not smiling, like your energy is infectious. It's like sunscreen. So yeah. if you're down and out all the time and you're moping around, like who's going to want to work with you? Like no one's going to want to work with you. So I, <laughs> that's kind of harsh. People want to work with someone they think can get them what they want, but also like just make it fun. Like it's supposed to be fun. It's going to be stressful at some point, but try to make it fun when it doesn't have to be. All right. So <clears throat> this is kind of like the meat of one-on-one to say on modern, modern marketing. So this comes from a, a book called Seven Levels, of, Seven Levels of Communication. And just bear with me here for like 10 or 15 more minutes. So if you can see at the bottom, that's the least effective way to communicate is through advertising. And I'll just give you an example. When's the last time that you bought something from a billboard? Anybody? You're on the interstate, you see a billboard. I'm gonna go buy that, right? Like it just, it just doesn't really happen. Like when's the last time you bought something off a TV commercial or a radio commercial? Like very, very rarely, you know, those things can be good for branding, um, but it's not great for conversion. And it's not great for our business unless you're wanting to waste a lot, a lot of money. Right. And so moving up the scale, your, um, your impact level gets better. Right. So you've got direct mail then you've got electronic communication. I'll throw email probably throw text between email and handwritten notes. Then you've got um, phone calls, events and seminars, and then one-on-one, -on -one, right? And you can see that down in the bottom, you're starting more informational with people. And then as you get closer and closer to the one-on-one, -on -one, you're more influential. So really at the end of the day, the game is like understanding my value, making sure that I can articulate my message, and then just getting to one-on-one, -on -one, however I do it, getting with one-on-one -on -one with as many people as I can every year. Because how many times do you think someone is going to hire you to be their agent and buy or sell a house without you ever meeting with them one-on-one? -on -one? I mean, it happens. It's like one out of 200 deals, maybe, <laughs> where you'll get a cash investor and he's like, hey, just call and buy a house. I mean, it just doesn't happen. So this goes back to like separate the sheep from the herd, you know, use the phone effectively. But if you're going to events and seminars, having good business conversations, asking to meet with people outside of that and doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings, that is what is effective. Like this is not new. It's just working now more than ever. Like this is a post pandemic playbook of like modern marketing is literally how many people can I sit down and have a connection with? Because people are craving it. So many people are stuck online. They're stuck at home. They're not even going to their office anymore. They're antisocial. And this is not, I don't think a good thing. This is just kind of where we're at. So your ability to get people to have coffee with you. I mean, there's a guy that I met who sells 200 plus houses a year. All he does is coffees every day. In fact, Tanya, I think we were talking about this last week. He literally goes to a coffee shop and uh, invites a bunch of people to meet with him. And every day, he every 30 minutes, he has someone come and sit down and have coffee with him. Everyone in the coffee shop knows him. And he just sends there over and over and over. So <clears throat> don't overthink it. One-on-one -on -one meetings. So <clears throat> this one's really important. And you don't have to write it all down. But I would, I would really strongly come back and consider this. So the reason this is important is because we always skip the steps. So this is chronological. Questions lead to conversations. Conversations lead to relationships. Relationships lead to opportunities. Opportunities lead to sales. And then the gravy is that sales lead to past clients and past clients lead to repeat business. So, I mean, if you're really thinking about like, what the heck am I doing? <laughs> this is it. But so often, so often we skip the questions. We think, oh, I'm going to go to from conversations to sales. Like we just, you know, we want the fast track. We're trying to take care of our families. There's nothing wrong with being in sales. So hear me say that. But we skip that really people want us to ask questions about them. 
People want us to ask questions about what their needs are, what's going on in their life. How can real estate help them one way or another in their life? You know, and asking more questions leads to more great conversations, right? And conversations to relationships, right? So your ability to expand your emotional capacity and, and manage more relationships is going to be a direct reflection of your income. So I'll say that again, your ability to expand your emotional capacity to manage more relationships is going to be directly um, reflected in your income. There's a lot, there's tech that can help you. There's, you know, all kinds of different things, but at the end of the day, that is the game, right? So you don't need, again, I said earlier, if you, if you stay in touch with your database, you can get about a 10% return annually. So either those people in the database are going to buy or sell, or they will refer you to someone. So if you've got 250, in fact, there's studies that say the human brain cannot manage more than 150 relationships at a time. So I'm sure you've heard of these people, like you've got these huge databases, right? And there's all these names. And it's like, do you know that person? No. Do you know that person? No. If you walked into a bar with that person, no, you are no. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So why do we keep chasing people that we don't know instead of working with people we do know? Mm -hmm. Why do we do that? <laughs> like, why do we make it so hard ourselves? Like, I don't want to work with some of my friends. Like, I really don't. They're cheap. They're inconsistent. They're flakes, right? I still love them. But when they refer me to somebody, that's my rite of passage, right? That's the person I want. Hey, man, you got to talk to my boy, Daniel. He's one of the best. Like, that's all I need. And I'm like, I'm in. So again, chronologically, questions lead to conversations. Conversations lead to relationships. Relationships lead to opportunities. Opportunities lead to sales. Sales lead to past clients. And past clients lead to repeat business. Follow me. So here's, here's the metrics. Um, so I learned this from an author <clears throat> that I've met multiple times. His name's Phil Jones. Puts out great freaking content. Um, his book is called Exactly What to Say. Highly recommend you reading it. Pretty easy to read. We'll give you a lot of great ideas. But he studied, I think it was actually over 620 companies. And he was looking for their sales metrics. <laughs> and here's what it came up to is... For every 10 meetings, 10 meetings will lead to about five appointments. And out of every five appointments, you're going to find one to three legit opportunities. So 10 meetings, five appointments, one to three opportunities. Now, what is a meeting? To me, a meeting is Tanya is my buddy. Hey, Tanya, what's up? You want to go have lunch? Or, hey, Tanya, come over. Let's watch a football game. Like, I'm just, I want to have a meeting. We may talk about, I, I'd like to talk about business. She's not in the market right now, but she can introduce me to a vendor. She can tell, teach me something about her neighborhood. She can recommend me to one of her friends. All those things can happen by those meetings, right? So that's a meeting. An appointment is somebody who wants to buy, sell, or invest, let's say, in the next 12 months. So what you can control in this scenario is how many people you're talking to about your business and, and how many meetings you're going on. You can't control how many opportunities. You can't control how many appointments. You can control how many meetings. And I'd never really heard it that way because, you know, you look at a lot of the sales metrics in real estate, it's always about appointments. And yes, those metrics are accurate. But there's other activities that lead to buyer or seller appointments, and that's actually what you can control. So what you got to figure out is, okay, what is your, what's your income goal? Mm -hmm. How much money do you make per deal? And then how many clients do you need to write that many contracts? How many appointments do you need to get that many clients? How many meetings do you need to have that many appointments? And then how many conversations does it take you to get that? So I know that, I know that was kind of a lot, especially not to see it there visually, but how many people do you need to talk to? So let's say 
let's say your goal is you want to make $100,000 in real estate. Most of our markets, you can make a hundred grand, I would say within like 20 closings. So let's say two closings a month, you're making $150,000. So to get two closings a month, I basically need to go on about five appointments a month and 10 meetings. How many conversations to get those 10 meetings, right? So you just, Essentially, you figure out how many people you need to talk to and then divide that by how many weeks you want to work and then just figure out like how quickly can you hit that number. I mean, it, it, it may take some a new agent three or four months to have 10 meetings, but I would be willing to bet that if you were very, very serious about your business, you could find 10 people to meet with today to meet with next week. So yeah, this is actually a really good segue into next week. We have Gary Semenek. Um, he is going to be teaching a class called What's the Plan? And it's an in-depth, easy to plug in business plan, spreadsheets and all, predictable action plan followed up with the big why your vi and your vision. Success is easy when you already see yourself in the end zone. So be there, you guys. Tuesday's the best class. I don't know if he's teaching it Wednesday. Um, but again, you'll get coaching from him to take all this and put it into action. And uh, Daniel's gonna be cool. here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I can't wait to learn from him. So this to me just kept it really simple. You know, um, I can control how many meetings I'm having. And then just a couple more slides here, but um, if you're kind of thinking about, just to summarize, like what do, what do buyers need? You know, kind of uh, what do they need out of an agent? Here are a couple of the key things. They need you to find the properties, negotiate the offers, and oversee the transactional details. I mean, that's essentially what the agent does. They want you to be an expert in the market, like be in the know about local resources, know the stats and the numbers, and then partner with the best service providers. So back to the beginning, we were talking about like what do customers need, and then I'm going to build my product and build my marketing behind that. This is mostly what buyers need. And then sellers, uh, the main thing sellers need is to find them buyers. <laughs> so just remember when you're messaging and you're marketing yourself to people, like don't forget to tell them <laughs> that you're going to bring them a buyer. <laughs> like that is the most yeah. important thing, right? And, and price, 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 I put that in there because price cures all woes. Most people think real estate's about condition location. It's not, it's actually always about price. Never forget that. Anything will sell for the right price. So sellers need you to find them buyers, price the home correctly, have a marketing plan, make sure you're doing all the hustle activities, um, negotiate in their best interest, project manage repairs and staging, and then communicate weekly at a minimum. So again, I would, you know, Tanya's going to email you these slides, just come back here and just kind of use this just to start the kind of the idea stage. Um, but this is what, this is what they're looking for. Um, yeah, this one I'll, I'll just kind of brush on, but um, people do always want what other people have. I mean, that's kind of how we operate as humans. So make sure you go out and ask your top 25 friends to recommend you online. Um, right now, people are checking you out before they meet with you. <clears throat> and sometimes they're not going to meet with you until they check you out. So you need somewhere. I, I, I put all of our reviews on Google because I just think it's the best kind of overlapping. So they don't know that your mom is the one that's writing the review. They don't know, like you could have character reviews. So say you haven't sold a house. Yes. Someone come there and speak to your character, or speak to your hard work or your upbringing or your knowledge of the area. That still counts, but you need to get some people recommending you online. Uh, that's going to really help your conversion, right? Well, and also um, a lot of you guys have had other jobs. You guys have worked on projects for people. Anything Absolutely. like, hey, you know, can you just comment on how it was to work on that project with me? Um, you guys need to go ask for that. And I, I'll give you the link for that. So um, just kind of putting this all together and then we can do some Q&A, um, but take action now. <clears throat> Whenever you have an idea or you set a new goal, if you take action within the next 24 hours, 
you have a 65% more likely chance to actually hit that goal. So like after today, go back and look at your notes, think about what you want to implement. <clears throat> if you can take the first step in the next 24 hours, 65% chance more likely that you hit it. Um, know yourself. Just never forget who you are and where you came from. Um, it's enough. Uh, just, just make sure that you can articulate like who you are and how that benefits uh, your clients. And um, this is just something I always tell our agents, but be the best agent in the transaction. You know, it's sometimes you're gonna have to do the other person's job, but when you're a really good agent in the transaction, sometimes your customers will talk to the other agents like, oh, you're working with Tanya, she's a great agent. Like your reputation in the marketplace is important. So just be the best agent in the transaction and just know that your validity comes from your commitment to success. Like you're not always gonna win, you're going to make mistakes. In fact, if you're not making mistakes, you're probably not trying hard enough, but it's your commitment to success, commitment to testing, trying things, iterating, and continuing to grow. Like that is your marketing and your messaging. So, I love that. Yay, raw. So um, anybody got a couple of ahas? What did you write down? Like what <clears throat> kind of what would your takeaway be for your next steps? Thank you all for being here, by the way. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I guess my aha would be, um, you know, keeping in touch with the people that I already know, like you said, because we have all these internet leads and everything, and they're just not, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. So just basically stay in touch with who you know, talk to them and make sure, you know, they know what you want. They, they know your value and that way they can pass it along because even if we do get someone from an, inter an internet lead, they don't know you, they don't know who you are, they don't know how you work. And it's really hard to get someone to be like, yes, I want to work with you, even though I don't know you. Yeah, right. but you know what, Maria, to, to that? Every one of you, those working internet leads should have a 15 second video on your phone that says face with the name. As soon as you're done talking to them, send them a video. Hey, great talking to you. Wanted to give you a face with a name. I'd love to earn your business and help you find a home. Yeah. I mean, the reality is you're not going to know every person that works with you. However, all your deals can be referred to you from people that know you. And like, and this is just something I struggle with, but I have to remind myself, I don't have to boil the ocean, right? Like I don't need everyone in the world to like me, right? I just need about 30 people a year <laughs> to say like, hey, I'll do business with you. And so just be you and people are gonna, people are gonna uh, connect with you just the way you are, uh, but you gotta put yourself out there. Two more. Dee Dee. Um, Kenya, anybody? Any thoughts? Well, Danielle, I, I just want to say thank you for this presentation. And I love your charisma. Your mom is right. <laughs> and I, I just want to, my aha was just that you are validating what I love to do most is going out to the community and, and talk to people and all that good stuff. And I have met many more new wonderful people through the people in the church and in school. So thank you for, for emphasizing that because sometimes we doubt our way of doing things and 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 that's I love one-on-ones and that's my my thing and I'm so happy that you um highlighted that so thank you and the the presentation was amazing thank You're you so, so much welcome. for being here my pleasure I appreciate you being here and good luck um being out there oh I can you yes, hear me yes ma'am yeah, th everything was good but I I like how you said with the google reviews because you I thought that we just had to have like you know real estate transaction but working with other people with other things and being able to, because people, I go watch, I mean, I read Google reviews, so I got a list, like, I'm about to shoot out to my friends, please give me, you know, a review, because we read reviews, I buy products off of reviews, I do business off of reviews, so I think that's going to help, too, but everything was really great, thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, you're so welcome, I mean, just think about it, I, I, uh, if they're really your friends, mm -hmm. <laughs> they won't just like take two minutes to write your review. 
I mean, that kind of shows you where your relationship is. Most people, when you ask for their help, they're going to say yes. You're like, hey, man, I just need a favor. I'll, what I'll typically do is I'll call my friend, like, hey, man, can we talk business really quick? So, like, this is mm -hmm. a business call. Hey, this would really help me out. Can you just, like, go do this? Even though it kind of feels weird to ask, like, your friends are the ones who should be standing up for you. Like, your yeah. in-laws, your parents, like, all those people, those are your advocates. So, like, let them go out and put, put their, uh, their, you know, opinion of you out there because other people it, it makes other people feel comfortable okay i thank you appreciate it you're welcome yeah. well kenya did, were you going to say something no i was just saying so aha for me was everything and, and confirmation actually because i mean you hear it from all different uh, avenues of the same thing you know the, the get out there and 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 do the things right touch base um talk to people which I love to talk to people and you hear it. And then, but today, some, for some reason, it resonated with me. Like, just get, just get out there. And I think Tanya kind of called it out, like, get out the yoga pants. It's leggings I have on, by the way, because <laughs> uh, I work from home. <laughs> but, <laughs> but just the aha is just get out there, touch the people, talk to them. Uh, and then on one of your slides, and I see it a lot, wash, rinse repeat like just don't try to you know reinvent the wheel just do just do the things that are there in front of you that's going to make the money so that was my aha so awesome. i appreciate it thank you mm -hmm. oh you're so welcome and mm -hmm. and just know that everything i told you today this is not theory this is like mm -hmm. me this is me going the opposite direction and literally wasting multiple millions of dollars trying to like build a tech mm -hmm. business and an online lead business and now I'm literally on the opposite end of the spectrum. And this is what I'm teaching people because this is what works. Like this, like th there's data behind everything I told you, like within my own business. So yeah, right. I mean, it's like, sometimes you think it's so simple then, mm -hmm. wow, like what's the catch? Like there is no mm -hmm. catch. Just go meet a bunch of amazing yes, people they and they're going to support you. And you never know who could change your life. I mean, one of the hidden benefits of real estate is like you get to meet amazing people and clients and you're impacting them and they can impact you. So like, look forward to that. Like it's their lucky day that you call. It's their lucky yes, day. Yes, yes. And you guys, here's the thing. A lot of you guys are on teams and the teams have great leads, right? Teams are supplementing you. But the other thing is, is a lot of you guys, when you get on teams like Daniel's, you're just like, give me leads, give me leads, give me leads. Well, if you actually take those leads that they're giving you, plus go meet more people, now you're doubling your business. And now you see, it's not about leads. It's about relationships. It's about talking to people. And everybody that gets in this business, they're like, who has leads? Give me leads. Well, go generate your own relationships, generate your own leads, and then you'll double the ones that you're getting from your team. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll be happier. You know, there's nothing wrong with working leads. And if you've got, if you're on a good team, and they're giving you leads, like there's nothing wrong with working those. I just want to reiterate that it can be a false bottom, right? Like yes. it can be, you don't want long term, it's a trap. Because the business is more fun when you're the local expert. And there's going to be a stage where if you've got your marketing right, that you're just going to get inbound opportunities. But if you never spend the time to build those local strategic relationships, then you're every, every year you're starting from scratch. So do what I told you first <laughs> and then secondarily work your leads. And then that way over time, like it's probably going to take a couple of years, but over time, those relationships will start to send you stuff in and then doing the online leads will just kind of be like, if you want to do it, you can, but it's not like, oh crap, I don't have any money. I've got to call these random people. Um, so you got to do the hard work one way or the other. <laughs> just I love it. Do it up front or wait until you're burnt out. So I'm, I'm suggesting just start right now, build some good habits and wait and see what happens over the next couple of years. Pay your dues, I guess. I yes, mean, it's the rite yes. of passage. I mean, it's the rite of passage, but it's more fun. I mean, that's, that was really the ultimate decision for us is that our agents were miserable. I mean, we were buying four or 500 leads a month and the agents were chasing them. They get somebody they thought was going to buy a house and then that person would ghost them or they'd never moved to town. And then like, they're disappointed and they called them a hundred times. It's like, 
when someone gives you a referral, how many times do you have to call them to get an appointment? Uh, exactly. One or two, or you're chasing strangers and you're calling them 10 to 15 times. So it is actually, a, the relationships is actually a shortcut. It just appears to be a longer strategy at the beginning, but it's actually not. I love it. Daniel, you are always just so much value, like value bombs. You guys, thank you so much. And he is so busy. Like I am so happy to have you on. He's in my coach's leadership group. And one thing about this company, EXP, is we're collaborative. Like you guys are new agents. There's a lot of top producers that will never talk to new agents, okay? And he's on talking to new agents. I like new agents, okay? And so- We like you too, Tanya. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) And so what I want you guys to do is um, I'm going to send you all of the, the um, printouts. Daniel, I just sent you an email to get the uh, that hire me service plan so I can send okay. to them. Um, I want you guys write this down. One, I want you to all send me a text. What was your aha and what is an action plan? One to two things that you're going to do right away. Not 10 things. I just want one to two things you're going to do right away to get your business moving forward. Okay. I want you guys to all go to the YouTube page and watch in great detail Daniel's Get Local training, okay? Because he's going to talk to you about getting out there, okay? Laura Malik's Beyond the Listings training, okay? It all goes back to what Daniel's saying. I want you guys to be in the class next week um, for business planning. If you guys want to know how to present buyer presentations, Chris Nolan is doing that tonight. You guys have that information. And I need your help, okay? Here's how I need your help. I'm gonna send you all a link to my Google reviews and I would love to hear how I coach you and if someone comes into this program, the value that they're getting, okay? And guess what? I can help you because I can be one of your first Google reviews because I know you all, okay? And in that, I'm going to send you guys a PDF because I have reviews, Daniel, probably like you, all over the place. And I'm happy to send this to you too, Daniel. And I basically created a Canva link that goes to a website with all my reviews because I literally had my assistant take all my reviews and put them in one document and one website because they're all over the world. So could you guys do that for me? I mean, that's awesome. You got nine, nine here just to get started. So I would say like, just shoot, set a minimum goal, like go for like 25 or maybe 50. Yeah. And and it'll make you proud. It'll make you proud. Help each other. Why don't you guys all help each other with reviews, right? If you know each other, like, let's just get the party started. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Thank you so much, Daniel. What are your closing words? Um. I will quote my friend Stuart Smiley from um, Saturday Night Live back in the 80s. This will uh, date me, but he used to always say, you're good enough, you're smart enough, and gosh darn it, people like you. So just remember that. Mm-hmm. Guess what? The ones that don't, they're don't like, Yeah, they don't really don't. <laughs> don't give up. Don't give up. Your biggest skill and your biggest competitive advantage is your ability to not quit. Like Apple was not built overnight. Great businesses are not built overnight. Just don't quit. It's kind of like the stock market. You're going to have some peaks and valleys, but as long as you're trending in the right direction, you're going to be fine. Okay. And with them having all this, (laughs) Daniel, you can attest to this. A lot of realtors don't have what you guys have here. I'm sending you workbooks, you know, like crazy resources. You guys already have a massive competitive edge and you're getting in front of like leaders like Daniel. Would you agree, Daniel? Yeah, I mean, I spent thousands of dollars building worksheets and playbooks. I sent you guys, Tanya's going to share it with you, a video video playbook that we built recently. So if you really wanted to get in video, that was kind of the next layer to our conversation, but just taking all this messaging, starting to create content um, and putting yourself out there in video really, really important, but don't overcomplicate it, (laughs) right? The complexity is the enemy of production. Um, So just keep it simple. And every year you can add a little something onto your business, but saturate your free opportunities first, invest your minutes wisely and don't give up. 
Yep. And I'm going to, I downloaded them all for you, but you're not going to get them until you give me a review. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. All right, guys, I got, I got to bounce to another meeting. It's great seeing you. Okay. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. You're welcome. My pleasure. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a good yeah. day. You too.